One billion people. <laughs> Incredible India. Exotic. The spiritual of India. Spiritual, I think. Until recently, India was little more than a set of popular cliches in the West. It was a land of religiosity. Of mendicant fakirs and of elephants. And of a people in thrall of the cow. But truth, they say, lies somewhere between popular perception and the hyperbole. And India's truth lies in its many inherent paradoxes. To slightly tweak the famous words of V.S. Naipaul, India is a land of a million realities. From the sublime to the ridiculous, the mundane to the fantastic, and from the very pathetic to the absolutely glorious. These realities exist concurrently, giving life to that old cliché about unity in diversity. And that is one of the many truths about India. Almost every cliché that's been perpetuated about it probably has some basis in truth. For instance, the one about the cow. The cow is truly holy to its almost 80% Hindu populace. Or at least, it is so to the practicing Hindu. A symbol of wealth and prosperity in Vedic times, the cow is regarded, to date, as a benign and maternal figure, the Gaumata. Be it popular mythology, the scriptures, or religion itself, the cow has always been accorded an exalted status in India. She was very dear to Krishna, a cowherd, and among the most popular and loved of all Indian gods. Krishna Bhagwan, in ke piche nange paam chalte the, inki seva karte the. Aaj wo dwarka dish bane hue the. Aaj tak wo dwarka dish hai, ye gaon ki seva karte. Usse ati uttam aur kya ho sakta hai? Any temple dedicated to Lord Shiva must also have Nandi, his mount and the universal bull. In many ways, perhaps, the cow is like the river Ganges for Hindus. Today, Ganga, Gai, Gaya and Gita can't be found in Hindu culture. चाहे हम ढूंढना चाहें और चाहे कोई विदेशी ढूंढना चाहे तो इसी के परव्यू में ही एक हिंदू धर्म की विशेष परिभाषा या व्याख्या की जा सकती है जिसमें गाय का प्रमुख स्थान है मच लाइक द गंगा द काउ इज सीन एज प्योर शी ब्लेसिस शी नरिशिस शी हील्स शी इज होली गाय के बारे में जो हिंदू परसेप्शन है उसके अनुसार गाय व्यक्ति के धार्मिक अभ्युदय और निश्रेयस दोनों की सिद्धि के लिए आवश्यक है अपरिहार्य है एंड इन दैट पर्हैप्स ऑल्सो लाइज द प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज लाइक द गंगा द काउ टू इज नाउ अ स्टोरी ऑफ निगलेक्ट Like the Ganga, reverence for the cow also is now largely theoretical, never translating into action, or at least not often enough. From an agrarian society that once largely depended on its cows, 
the relationship has now transformed into a more need-based one. Cows are still an integral part of many Hindu rituals, which remain incomplete without a prayer or offering to the cow. But on most other occasions, she is left to her own devices. And it's precisely because its status as something sacred remains unchanged that the dichotomy between the community's belief and action is baffling. Seva bhavna khatam ho gayi hai. Log apni mataon ko jinke garb se paida hote hain, unko rakhne ke liye jagah nahi dete hain, to gaye ko kahan se denge? Ye unka ek dharmik giravat hai. At one level, one could say it's a form of hypocrisy. But at another level, these are all the sort of glorious paradoxes that are a part of religious belief. That you have to be able to sustain contradictory ideas. Unlike the Ganga, however, apathy towards the cow can hardly be explained away as a case of being out of sight and therefore the mind. Because cows can be seen everywhere in India. As visible in urban and semi-urban areas, as they are in the rural areas. In fact, a depiction of the chaotic traffic in Indian cities would hardly ring true if it did not include a few cows walking about in the middle of the road obstructing free movement of vehicles. And yet, the cow otherwise so sacred that killing it is a serious criminal offence in much of India, not to mention the moral outrage it is bound to cause, continues to suffer cruelties and indignities every day. Accustomed to luxuriously grazing for long hours in lush green pastures for much of the day and then being pampered and fed some more at home in the evenings, the animal whose dietary habit of chewing the cud is now a commonly used analogy for lazy contemplation has been reduced to forage for food in garbage dumps. Like any other stray animal. A scavenger looking for sustenance in the community garbage dumps and landfill sites. From a society where recycling and near-zero waste was the norm, we've transformed into one that generates a frightening amount of waste every day. Tons upon tons of biodegradable and non-degradable waste. Not to mention equally colossal amounts of e-waste. Quite literally, we are choking ourselves and everything else on this planet to death. Solid waste management is a big challenge in today's scenario because it all depends on the consumption pattern of the individuals. As you consume more, as you are in living in urban societies, then your pattern of living also changes and then your life, you know, it becomes part and parcel of plastic scenario. <laughs> Is this a byproduct of modern living or simply a consequence of our choices? Perhaps it's both. But either way, it points to a lifestyle that is now deeply and completely dependent on the single largest contributor to the problem of non-degradable waste. The villain of the piece, plastic.
be it for preservation, transportation or packaging. Almost every product in the market today uses plastic in some form. It is, in fact, an inseparable part of life today. It's more like a cat with nine lives. It is something that can be reused over, over and over again, as a result of which it conserves resources. The nine lives they have, like the proverbial cat, is what makes these thin plastic bags an environmental nightmare. Banned they may be, but like stray cows on city roads, plastic bags can also be found just about everywhere in India. It's tempting to think that things were a little different, and perhaps better, for cows until a few years ago, when a large part of the population still sourced its milk from local dairies. But, with the launch of Operation Flood in 1970, small dairy owners, especially in cities, found themselves under pressure and in an unequal competition with a mechanized behemoth that was churning out thousands of litres of milk to supply around the country. Moreover, thanks to rapid development and urbanization, there was shrinkage in the physical space available to run dairies. As dairy owners struggled to maintain a steady output of milk production to retain their customers, hygiene, quality and animal rights were slowly given the short shrift. <laughs> Besides denying calves their share of the milk and pumping cattle with oxytocin and other hormonal injections to induce greater supply of milk, dairy owners, who are now often forced to operate from cramped cubby holes, let the cattle out on city streets to fend for themselves. The presence of cows on the street, despite um, a lot of attempts to try and remove the dairies, which happen to be illegal in many cases, and to get the cows out, has failed because of the ways in which the dairies are also an integral part of the urban economy. And, you know, municipal officials, electricity officials, all of them actually allow the dairies to survive by taking bribes from them. So as long as there is this nexus of uh, illegal connections between people, and as long as people still want to drink milk straight from the cow or buffalo, rather than buying it from in a polythene pack, um, I think the cows will continue to roam the streets. It's not the ideal way of dealing with our streets or with cows. But uh, I think the fact that they're there should make us uh, become more conscious of the fact that there is something that's uh, at issue here, something that's contested, and that we need to think about and address. And address it we must. Unfortunately, however, repeated attempts to discuss the matter with the authorities, be it the relevant ministries in the central government, the government of Delhi, Animal Welfare Division, Central Pollution Control Board, or even the Municipal Corporation of Delhi, an area where the problem of wandering cows is all too apparent, have been stonewalled. In the Anandapur district in Andhra Pradesh, however, the municipality has been more proactive. Mostly these days we find most of the animals, especially cows, they are consuming plastic in a very huge extent. Huge, uh, this thing, uh, extent. So that's again harming the animals. And also, we are finding them everywhere in almost on main roads. So that's why we are trying to just shift them to uh, places where they can be kept safely. In the last three months, we have almost shifted 15, 15 truckloads of uh, cows from Anantapur town. Majority of them went to uh, Puttaparthi's institute. 
the institute in puttaparthi is karuna society for animals and nature run by clementine paws at karuna true to the spirit of compassion it's been named after they not only look after approximately 500 animals of their own but also offer free medical care and shelter for sick injured and abused animals With support from the Kindness Trust Australia, they also run a wildlife centre. When a cow from the first lot of animals that Karuna Society received from the Anantapur municipality in 2010 died, Clementine and her colleagues realized just how real the danger from plastic is. Very strange. There is a difference between knowing and knowing. Many years ago, we had a buffalo that died, and we did post mortem, and it had a lot of plastic. So it means we have seen it. It never entered our mind that it would be a problem for other, for more animals. And then, to our horror, one after the other, I think within a quite a short time, four animals died. So we did post mortem on all four, and it was all plastic. In an independent and now published study conducted at Tanuvas or the Tamil Nadu Veterinary and Animal Sciences University, the human liquor and milk from stray cattle was tested for PCBs and other toxins. What we did is that we uh, we undertook the extraction as per international norms. Uh, we could detect uh, there are nearly PCBs. There are 70 to 80 PCBs are available metabolites. We took up 145 and 156. They are supposed to be carcinogens. Of the uh, 30 to 40 samples were positive for these compounds. They were of the violative nature, which is above the international norms. So there is a real threat to the livestock because it um, affects the rumen microflora status. Then another thing is that the public health aspect regarding the milk. Such quantities of uh, PCB contamination when consumed uh, can lead to a lot of detrimental effects. Any cattle you take in city, there will be some quantity of plastics. And as the age advances, the chances for accumulating plastics in huge quantities, even to the you know capacity of 50 kilos. We have uh, done surgeries in our uh, college. We have removed 50 kgs of plastics. Is it not staggering that 50 kilos of plastic is routinely found inside cows during surgeries? Is it not staggering that all the big fat cows we see on the streets are so not because they are well fed, but simply because they are bloated with all the plastic waste they ingest at garbage dumps? उनसे फायदा उठाने वाले बहुत हैं, उनको नुकसान पहुंचाने वाले बहुत हैं, देखभाल कोई नहीं करता हूं। उनकी हालत तो जितने भी जानवर रोड्स पर नजर आते हैं, सबसे बुरी हालत गाय की है। What the professors at Tanuvas have to say next is just as shocking. If you go to a slaughterhouse, also you will find 100% of the cattle which is slaughtered will have plastics in them. 100%. In case of slaughterhouses where animals are routinely slaughtered for meat, so whenever two our students go there, they find almost around more than 90% of the animals slaughtered have some amount of plastic or other in their uh, stomach. If that is the state of meat coming out of government-run slaughterhouses, it boggles the mind to think what the situation must be with animals that are slaughtered illegally, in shops, and on the sly. Many people know about the plastic and that it's ending up in animals, but the awareness of it, the consciousness of it, that only came to me when I actually saw the surgery. And when one after the other was so full of plastic, not one exception, and only then my mind switched, and I understood that 
every animal we see on the road is full of plastic. And then it was like an explosion in my awareness. My God, this is too much. This is so huge, this problem. This is not just a cow or a buffalo that is dying. No, this is a major, major problem. And from the time realization of the problem first set in, almost 50 rheumatomies or surgeries have been performed at Karuna, all of which have been supported by the Kindness Trust. Dr. Narendra Reddy, the veterinary surgeon who has been involved with most of these surgeries, is ready to perform another one today. It is having a lot of plastic in it. While the cow is being washed and prepared for the surgery, let's try and understand why plastic is so bad for cows and how a cow's digestive system works. Cow's stomach has got four parts. You know, the first one is called the rumen, and second one is called the reticulum, and third one is called the omasum, and the fourth one is called abomasum, which is a true stomach like what we have. Basically, four compartments are differently placed. So from the first compartment, when it goes to the second compartment, it needs to be in finer particles, which is not possible to you know, break down the plastics into finer particles because there's no system which can break them into, shed them into smaller pieces, which can go into the second compartment. So they get stuck in the fore stomach itself throughout their life. There's no way of it going into the second, third and fourth. If it goes to the fourth, it can eventually get out. But there's no way it can go out because it is not finely shredded. Open the abdominal muscles and now I am doing to fixation of rumen to the wall to prevent uh, spillage of uh, ruminal contents into the abdominal cavity. Now we are opening uh, rumen to get into the rumen. It is having a lot entangled with each other. We can like hard rock like structure. It is very difficult to remove also. Yeah, it is whole thing in like a single rock. We have to break it and uh, take it out. Ah. So to remove that one, we have to break it into small pieces and... Uh, so how many years do you think this has been accumulating itself? More than uh, six, seven years. Maybe more than ten years, I think. All entangled and uh, became a rock. It is only plastic, so entangled into a, a single piece, it uh, cannot pass through that uh, uh, digestive tract. So if it is a single one, it can uh, pass through that uh, tract. Uh, ruminal contents, it is a dirty one. This might be the piece of a balloon, a bigger balloon. It is a, some leather piece, I think. A lot of sand is there. A little over four hours after it began, 
the surgery is finally over. This is an antiseptic and fly repellent spray. It's Now, it's time to put together all this plastic waste that's been extracted and to check how much it weighs. A practice that Karuna Society has diligently followed for all the ruminotomies it has organized. The total at the end? When one kilo of plastic waste is a kilo too many, this poor cow has been carrying a shocking 53 kilograms of plastic waste in its stomach. One doesn't even have to be an animal lover to see that this is wrong. This is just plain cruelty. Day in and day out, health experts tell us that we are what we eat. So what does it make cows who, on the evidence of the surgery we've just witnessed, feed largely on plastic? What does it make them if not plastic cows? Plastic cows that do not come with the indestructibility of plastic bags, which, as the plastic industry tells us, have nine lives. Cows, let's not forget, have only one. Her blood stains are on our hands and on our souls, indelible and fatal. The path to redemption is inscribed in the Indian heart. It must not be littered with the human detritus which despoils our streets, kills our cows, and poisons our creed. बहुत ज़्यादा हम लोगों को अवेयर होना पड़ेगा कि कहीं भी प्लास्टिक किसी भी तरीके से कहीं पर उनके सामने ना आने पाए. The next time we use a plastic bag to dispose our kitchen waste and garbage, it may be a good idea to stop and consider where these bags end up. Choking the drainage and sewage lines, or inside cows and other animals. This is what would normally constitute a happy ending. A patient with a potentially life-threatening condition walking away after a successful surgery. But it isn't quite the end and is far from happy. This cow, Lakshmi, is lucky to have been taken off the road and rescued by Karuna, where she will now spend the rest of her life in a friendly and caring environment. Other animal welfare organizations across the country will do their bit to rescue and rehabilitate many other cows. But what about the hundreds of thousands of other cows that are consuming plastic on the streets across India? Ever wondered why these cows are on the streets in the first place? Where they are exposed to plastic waste and traffic accidents. It's because of the demand for milk, milk products and meat. Discarded by dairy owners, the cows that are no longer milking, male calves and bulls are then ferried illegally and slaughtered for meat. These are just some of the facts that the Plastic Cow Project has discovered. We feel now this is not an environmental issue alone. This is not a political issue alone. This is actually an animal rights issue. We should have an adequate law and also enforcement. For that we need to create a body, for example, a Bureau of Animal Care and Control, which would not only be in charge of licensing of, say, uh, you know, animals, pack animals and performing animals, but also domestic animals and also enforce various uh, uh, rights of the animal. We have to empower such a body to take action, for example, issue a citation, you know, against an offender or to impound an animal which has been found to be ill-treated. There should be a directive from the government or from uh, the Supreme Court or from any responsible agency that Animals should not be exposed to the waste that we are producing because it has become so polluted and dangerous for the lives of animals. And we do not eat plastic garbage out of free will. But the animal is too innocent and it's all eating anything.
We are asking for a ban, a total ban on plastic bags as an animal rights issue. We have to think of ways in which we can empower animals and banning plastics is a way of keeping cows away from suffering and uh, saying that this is a violation of their basic right to live, eat, breathe, drink, graze as cows should do. We want to address this miserable journey that the cow has from scavenger to plastic to meat to, to milk to meat and then leather. This is the journey of the Indian cow and the Indian cow is not holy anymore. But there are the people, uh, many of the people is don't have that idea or they eating shit that the holy cow has to be holy. They don't have that sense you now. Cow is a god. Cow is a god, says little Vishnu, with all the wide-eyed innocence of the child he still is. But very soon, like everything else, this naive day of his wonder years will fade away. And he'll grow up thinking, as the rest of us obviously do, that it's perfectly normal for cows to congregate at garbage dumps to look for food. He will grow up with the completely warped notion that, like all other underprivileged, unfortunate and unrepresented human beings and animals, it's normal even for a god to depend on garbage for survival. Very soon, like the rest of us, he will also learn not to see. come across a cow which, which was involved in an accident and uh, the Gwala who owns that cow came and we had some you know lettuce with us so we were trying to give it lettuce and he jokingly laughed and he said don't give her lettuce give her plastic she'll eat that they don't eat lettuce there are many cattle we have picked up which have been injured slightly in accidents and before we can even have them cured they are dead because of the plastic animals that have died from 30 kgs to 70 kgs, we did find the plastic bags. Along in the plastic bags, we found bricks, stones, nails, iron pieces. That means they were all tied inside the bag. There is a very simple solution, and that is animals should have no access to the waste that is being waste and the plastics that is being generated by the human community. <laughs>